Hello! In the last video, we took a look at how those dual format ST Amiga floppy disks worked. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest you take a look at that first because in this video, we're going to take a look at one of these. This is a tri format disk, and we're going to see if we can figure out how it works. Like all investigations, I'm going to start with some assumptions and guesses. The Atari ST and the PC both use the same file system on floppy disks, FAT12. The dual format disks couldn't be read by the PC, probably because they were using 10 sectors per track rather than the standard 9. My guess is the Atari ST and the PC will both share the same file system, i.e. the same folders and files, but maybe each one has its own folder. However, I suspect that all of the content for the Atari ST will be on the lower side of the disk and the PC the upper. Dividing that three ways, I guess the Amiga content will consume the rest, assuming it gets two sectors on track 0 and some on track 40. So, let's have a look. Once again, starting with Disk Flashback, that's always had support for dual format disks, you can see it's detected two file systems and made a drive for each. One for the Amiga, which looks exactly like it should. It claims to be a standard OFS disk, but as suspected, the files on the disk only actually take up 282k of physical space. That's about a third of the disk. Onto the PC and Atari side. It does indeed contain two folders, one labelled PC and the other ST. The entire disk this time claims to be about the right size for a double density FAT12 disk. And even if the Atari ST only had a single sided drive, the operating system would still know about double sided disks. And looking at the total usage for the Atari ST side, we see it's using 154k, whereas the PC folder is using 248k. Not really an even split, but maybe that was tailored to the content being added. OK, so we've seen the disk and we've understood the very basics. Let's dig a little deeper. Now, I've dumped a copy of the disk to the computer, so let's start with this image showing the sectors on the disk. Looks quite different from the dual format disks. At a quick glance, I'm guessing, ignoring track zero, these densely packed sectors on the upper and lower sides here are probably the Amiga ones, and the rest being for the PC and the Atari ST. There's a big difference here though on track zero. This is the dual format disk with its interesting overlapping sector and a smaller 256 byte sector size. Whereas, this is the triple format disk and the sectors are packed closely together. I'm really surprised it actually reads. If you count this, you'll find there's actually 11 sectors. However, the first two are Amiga sectors, identified as sector 0 and 1. We know from the previous video that these have to be here for the Amiga to recognise the disk, although this time it's not hiding another sector. It does, however, contain a little calling card, a copyright message written within the boot block, leaving us to no illusions as to who created the disk format. The remaining nine sectors, which is the normal amount for a PC disk, are actually normal PC sectors, although the sector order is a little odd, not that that really matters. I'm not going to show you the remaining tracks, because as suspected, they're either tracks containing just Amiga sectors, or the tracks containing FAT12 sectors with nothing clever about them at all. Now, the Amiga side of things isn't really going to be any different from last time, except that instead of only using the upper side, it's also using the lower side too. It may well have been that the Amiga content went on last, filling the spaces left over from the PC and the Atari ST content. But what I want to know is did they restrict the Atari ST content to just the lower side, and the PC to, well, maybe both sides? To find this out, we're once again going to have to have a deeper look at the file system. The first thing is to check what the BIOS parameter block for this disk looks like, with it being spelt correctly this time. And this is the set of parameters from the dual format disk from last time. There's also a small correction, because I had the number of sectors per cluster wrong. And this is the set of parameters for the triple format disk. A few things of note. The number of heads is now obviously set to 2, and therefore it's no surprise that the total number of sectors has increased as well. To remain compatible with the PC, we have 9 sectors per track instead of the previous 10, but only 3 sectors used for the file allocation table. Given the number of files on the disk, that seems perfectly fine. So the main thing I want to do now is to have a look at the directory structure, and, including the directory listings themselves, see what clusters the files use. If this disk was designed maybe to work with a single-sided drive, then I'd expect all the clusters for the ST content to be located on the lower side of the disk. So, let's take a look. So this is a representation of the PC and ST side of the disk if it was extracted on its own. Each square represents nine sectors. The left side is the lower part of the disk and the right side, the upper. Firstly, I'll add the main file system root block containing the BIOS parameter block. 
These sectors contain the file allocation table, or FAT, and there's two copies. And these entries are reserved for the directory root block. These sectors, now being marked in red, are the reserved and bad sectors, and it should come as no surprise that there's a load of them around track 40 on the lower side, where the Amiga stores its files, as well as the latter half of the disk, which we also know contains Amiga data. These sectors, marked in grey, are marked in the file system as unused. Now, onto the files. The cyan colours here represent the sectors that hold the directory at the root of the disk. These sectors in light green are the directory blocks and entries for the files and folders representing the PC folder and anything inside of it. And these sectors, in dark green, are all of the files for the PC part of the disk. Now onto the ST side. These sectors in magenta are the directory entries for items located in the ST folder of the disk. And finally, these darker purple sectors hold the contents of the files for the ST side. And as you can see, the ST content spans both sides of the disk, so you wouldn't be able to access the content of this if you only had a single-sided drive. I've been made aware of some clever disks that are double-sided but contain a folder for just the upper side, and anything related to that folder is kept within the clusters on the upper side. I'm really surprised that this technique wasn't used on this disk. Well, that wasn't as complex as my last video, and to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. I honestly thought the disks would have used the same tricks to keep the ST part to the lower side. Maybe by the time these disks came out, double-sided drives were much more common on the Atari ST. I actually think that in some ways, this disk format is a lot less complex than the dual format disks. Anyway, this concludes my little series on disk formats, and I hope you found it interesting. So don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe consider my Patreon too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.